This is a very important time <clears throat> and a difficult time for all of you and for your industry. It's a time when your clients need you and your help and advice more than ever. It's a time of great uncertainty about financial markets and about the global economy. The situation in the United States is now particularly troubling. Today I'm going to focus on the outlook for the U.S. economy, but I'll talk also about the U.S. dollar, about the prospects for Europe and for emerging market, uh, emerging market economies. And after that, I look forward to your questions. Let me begin <clears throat> by stressing my very positive long-term view about the U.S. economy. Although we do have important structural problems, the U.S. economy is basically strong and effective. We have an adaptable and a motivated labor force. We have strong entrepreneurial spirits. We have capital markets that support new businesses. And although we all complain about government regulations, my sense is that the regulations in the United States are less onerous than in other countries. All of this contributes to a high level of incomes and a generally high standard of living. Now, I begin with that long-term positive view because my remarks today are going to focus on the near term and on the serious problems that we face. The situation in the U.S. economy is now bad, it is getting worse, and the risks are that it will be very bad. I believe, and this is my personal view, that the U.S. economy is now in recession. I emphasize that it's my personal view because the National Bureau of Economic Research, of which I'm president, is the organization in the United States that officially dates the turning points, officially dates when a recession begins. And the National Bureau won't declare the start of this recession, assuming that I'm right and we are in recession, and won't declare that date for several more months until it's clear that we do have a uh, a, a significant, broad, and, and deep downturn in economic activity, and that revisions in the economic statistics don't move that starting date. But although an official designation of a recession is some months off, I think there's little doubt that the statistics tell us that the U.S. economy peaked somewhere in the December-January period, and that since then, most indicators have been heading down. Employment in the United States is down, private employment four months in a row. The unemployment rate has turned up. The most recent drop in employment is the most significant one that we've had in five years. The price of oil is increasing, and that together with the reductions in employment are reducing real incomes. Real personal disposable income per capita is lower now than it was six months ago. Household wealth is down. Consumer confidence, according to the surveys, has dropped to levels that we haven't seen for more than two decades. So it's not surprising when you put all of this together that real consumer spending is also down. In turning from the household sector to the business sector, we see that industrial production is lower, construction is down dramatically, new orders are off. In short, just about every economic statistic is telling us that the economy is sliding into the early stages of a recession. Now, there are optimists who say, yes, we're going to have a couple of weak quarters, but then in the second half of the year, things will turn up and 2009 is going to be just fine. And they have a case, and it basically hinges on three things. The fact that the Federal Reserve has been reducing short-term interest rates substantially, mostly in just the last few months, and we haven't seen the positive effects of that yet. Second, that Congress has enacted a significant fiscal tax cut that will take effect in May and June. Checks will be rolling to households and that the dollar has been coming down 
and that that's been increasing our net exports. Well, all of that is true, but I don't think it is powerful enough to turn around an economic downturn and to sustain an expansion. Let me comment on each of them. Although the overnight federal funds interest rate that the Federal Reserve Bank can control has come down sharply from five and a quarter percent to two and a quarter percent, the long-term interest rates have hardly moved at all. Mortgage interest rates are down less than a half of one percent during the same period that the federal funds rate is down three percentage points. Moreover, I believe, and I stress this in the article in today's Wall Street Journal, I believe that monetary policy will not have the traction in this downturn that it's had in the past because of the situations in the housing market and in the uh, credit market, something I'll come back and say more about. The fiscal package is a significant fiscal package. It's a cut of about one percentage point of GDP, and it will take the form of rebate checks going to virtually all households who have paid taxes in the United States. But the reason I supported that fiscal package when the Congress and the administration discussed it is that I hoped it was going to increase consumer sentiment, that it was going to increase confidence, and that through that increase in confidence, we would see a, a, a sustained increase in consumer spending. Well, even before the ink was dry on that legislation, all of the other adverse effects drove consumer spending, consumer confidence down. And we saw, as I said a moment ago, a very sharp fall in the last few months of consumer confidence as measured by the surveys down to levels that we haven't seen for more than a quarter of a century. Finally, the dollar. The dollar is helping. The U.S. dollar is down more than 15 percent relative to a year ago, down about 25 percent relative to a few years ago. That's given a big boost to our net exports. But the U.S. international trade sector is a small part of the U.S. economy. Our exports are only about 7 percent of GDP. So even a big boost to exports isn't enough to carry the economy as a whole. So I believe when you put it all together, we are at the beginning of a recession, the economy is sliding down. The question is not, are we in a recession, but what kind of a recession is it going to be? The last three recessions were relatively short, and at least the last two, relatively shallow. The last two recessions lasted only eight months, from the peak until we began a recovery. The more serious recession in the early 1980s lasted 16 months from the beginning until the upturn began. In my judgment, this recession could be more severe. Certainly it is different from the previous recessions. The last three recessions, including the one in the early 1980s, were caused by the Federal Reserve because the central bank wanted to bring down inflation. They raised the real short-term interest rates very substantially, and then after they saw that they had succeeded in slowing the economy and therefore beginning to bring down inflation, they lowered those rates. Well, this time, the Fed didn't cause the recession. The Fed didn't push up real short-term interest rates substantially. It wasn't aiming at lower inflation. And so this time what we have is a situation in which the Fed didn't cause the recession and therefore can't stop the recession by simply turning around its high interest rate policy. There was some Fed tightening before the downturn began, but it was really just enough to bring the Fed funds real rate back up to a neutral level, a, a, a level that was not particularly contractionary. The primary reason that we are in recession today is what's happening in the housing markets and in the credit markets. Those are related problems, but they're really separate problems as well, and I want to talk about each of those and how they could, and I emphasize the word could, how they could lead to a severe recession, a worse recession than anything we've seen in the past 50 years. 
But I stress the word could because I'm talking about a risk rather than a certainty or even the most likely outcome. So don't go away and say, I heard Marty Feldstein say that the economy of the United States is going to have the worst recession in the last 50 years. What you heard me say is that that could develop, that the conditions are such that we may have a much more severe recession this time than we've had in the past. But of course, as investment advisors, as investors, you have to think about what those possibilities are.